92.2 KWIO, The Boys Show. Good morning, Wyoming faithful. It's 11 a.m. on a chilly October 8th morning here in Laramie. Jack Sable here to talk some Cowboys football, and the Cowboys are on a tear. Four-game winning streak and coming home this week where they are undefeated to play Air Force. But let's talk a bit about the game that took place in Reno this past Saturday. By the way, I've been flooded and threatened with complaints about the people of Nevada that the pronunciation of their state is in fact Nevada, not Nevada. Nevada is Spanish for snowy or snowfall, depending on if you're using it as a noun or an adjective. That is where the state's name derives from, so I don't understand why it isn't pronounced that way but I do know how to pronounce 17 to 14 when I read it off a scoreboard and that translates to we beat you so regardless of how you pronounce your state's name we won But back to important matters, the first thing that we immediately have to talk about is that second half offense, which yet again put up zero points for the second game in a row. Now, I can't say the offense was non-existent because that's far from the truth. In fact, they were inches away from making that game a two-possession game in the third were it not for an injury to Sutton that caused the fumble. By the way, the concussion Sutton suffered was mild, and he will be a game-time decision for this coming Saturday. My prayers are with him. Anyway, it just seems like they can't get it into the end zone in the second, but I can't really blame the offense anymore. I would say they were more sluggish in the beginning of the first half than they were in the entire second. So to me, this is all just coincidence that they can't get things going in the second. But overall, I thought the offense was efficient and effective throughout the entire game. The running game looked more lively. And if Sutton turns out to be okay for this week, I think we could see more of him because he was actually the key to that drive that they had going on in the second half. On defense, they were iffy. I know that they held one of the nation's better offenses to only 14 points, but it could have been much worse with the ways that they opened up those windows on the sideline. And were it not for a few drop passes and touchdown saving tackles, The Wolfpack would have probably put up 28 on them. Definitely something that they are going to need to fix. But they'll be playing an option running attack against Air Force this coming Saturday. So that shouldn't be a primary concern of theirs this coming week. On to some comments and questions for this week. Remember, if you'd like the chance to have your question featured on air, leave a question in our comments section on the site, and I just might answer it. First question comes from EaglesFan14, and he asks, If Mashburn has a successful few seasons, can you see him going to the NFL and introducing this new offense? Well, first of all, thank you for the question. And uh, coaching hires from college programs are becoming a little more popular thanks to the recent successes of Pete Carroll and Jim Harbaugh. Now with the hiring of Greg Chiano from Rutgers this year. Could he go to the NFL in a few years? I mean, I think it's possible. Chip Kelly comes up every year and he runs an offense no one thinks can exist in the NFL. Yet look at how fast Belichick is running his offense this year. What is it like 24 to 25 seconds from each snap? And I'm sure Nick Saban's name gets uh, thrown around a lot with his huge success at Alabama. And the fact that, I mean, he really wasn't that unsuccessful in the pros. But I think at the end of the day, it all comes down to how popular the Wyoming program becomes. If Wyoming becomes a big player in the national picture, then yeah, I can see Mashburn booking it to the pros, especially with this offense in the future, definitely. It's not that far from a pro-style offense, and it pretty much maximizes every skill position on the field. So yes, I I do see uh, Mashburn possibly booking it to the NFL if he were to get an offer, yes. Let's see, uh, we've got a shout-out request here from Co-Kid Jr. or Dre. Well, there's your on-air shout-out. How you doing? Next question is from Heat's One Fan. Will the pistol formation be used more since running out of it has been so effective? I've noticed that as well, and I think Mashburn is noticing it too. He, he definitely has been going more to the pistol, and I think that they really run the best when they're in that full house formation. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the offense run about 50% of their offense out of the pistol against Air Force and get some major running yards out of it. After all, Mashburn really wants to get this running game going, and I think that's the best way to definitely do that. All right, one more. This one from Walter Armstrong. Still seeing problems with Wyoming's offense in the second half. What do you think is attributing to the offense's problems so much in the second half? Uh, Thank you, Walter. And uh, you know what? I I really wish I could answer that question because, uh, like I said earlier, I thought they did everything right in the second half, even though they were trying to run the clock down in the second. I mean, I I guess you can accuse them of 
playing the clock instead of playing the game when they got into the fourth quarter. But I think their second half woes were more of a result of the offense just not executing. The style doesn't change when they switch halves. It's just that they don't get it together like they do in the first. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of hoping that they fix that in this week's game against Air Force. Not a lot of news in recruiting this week. The big news, if anything, is that a number of prospects Coach Mashburn is looking at have all been invited to the Week 10 matchup against rival Colorado State in the border war. But the bigger news is that, once again, Wyoming may have another advantage for the second week in a row. Air Force's starting quarterback, Connor Dietz, will be out for the next four weeks with a broken tailbone, which means the 5'9 freshman Dan Graves will be getting the start going into the week. We'll see what effect that has on the game as Wyoming will come out in all gold this week when they rush into War Memorial Stadium to take on the Falcons. This is Jack Sable here on 101.2 KWYO, the boys show with more on the upcoming game in a bit. And the Pokes will start off today in the offset eye formation. Here on first down from their own 25. Miller will take the handoff straight up the middle. Follows all his blockers and picks up nine yards on the gain. That brings up second and one. Talked to Mashburn before the game and he said he wanted to keep it simple just like last week. So here we go. Same formation. Handoff to Miller again and this time he will be stopped in the backfield. A loss of three on that one. It will be third and four. Splitbacks here in the shotgun formation here on third and four. Smith, oh, he got a man off sides. It's going to be a free play here as he fires over the middle. And that's his fullback, Lang, that he hits. And they will decline the penalty here. First down, Pokes. He'll send the H-back. Tedder Easton in motion to the left. And it'll be a toss play out to Miller. He's got room on the outside, and he will get enough for the first down. And the Cowboys will come out here on second and nine in the offset eye pistol formation as they've got two wide receivers to the right-hand side. And Smith's going to change the play now. The wide receivers are going to split, and the eye formation is going to move to the right side instead of the left now as Smith drops back to pass, fires, and, ooh, hit the defender right in the helmet. And it's going to be third and nine now. Smith drops back as he surveys the field. Fires over the middle, and a diving effort by Heron unfortunately goes unrewarded as he can't make the catch and here's our first look at this air force offense as they come out in the split back shotgun formation and it's going to be a sweet play to cobb on the right side jukes and makes his way to the first down marker and picks up nearly 20 on that first carry graves it'll be a handoff to cobb who's going to stretch it out to the outside he's got the first down and more and he's tackled just in the nick of time by schober but not after picking up a huge gain of 16 on that run Man in motion to the left as Graves hands it off to Gitz. And he will be stopped for no gain, second and 10. Graves, another hand off to Cobb as he shoots up the middle, but only gets two before he stops. It'll be third and eight. Huge third down here for Wyoming as they've had some trouble stopping the run game thus far against Air Force as Graves is going to pass on this down, throws over the middle, finds Cobb, but he'll be dropped in the backfield. For a loss of one, fourth to nine, where Air Force will have to punt. Inside their own five, Wyoming will take over here as they line up in the pistol strong formation. And a handoff will go to Miller to the left side. He's going to stretch it out and pick up a gain of six before he's dragged down. From we'll behind. see if Wyoming can dig themselves out of this hole here on third and three. And Brett Smith will go play action. He's going to float one out to the outside. He hits his fullback, Lang, who picks up enough for the first down. A little questionable to kind of air it out like that, but he gets the first down, and that will be the last play of the first quarter as we're stuck in a deadlock here. Zero to zero, Wyoming currently on offense, and we'll be back right after this. Critical third and 11 here for Wyoming as they come out in a two tight end single back formation as they bring the tight end. No, that's the fullback laying in motion to the right side, and Smith will go play action. Firing to the right, and he's got McNeil on the comeback route First down, Wyoming. And Wyoming's going to come out in the single back look again. This time three wide. A little bunched on the uh, the right side here. As Smith will go play action yet again. Fires over the middle. Finds Ruffin on a cross pattern. He'll pick up seven on that gain. Smith brings the lineman that's Madden in motion. Prepare for some power running, and here it comes. Miller bounces outside, and he'll pick up enough for the first down. A gain of five on that one. And truth be told, I think that Wyoming is on to something here as they come out in a single back formation with three wide as Smith calls some audibles, and he's going to take the snap. 
Fires, it's a screen from Miller who stops and regains his balance, picks up the first down and more, a gain of 13 on that one as he shoved out of bounds. A good call there for the screen and Wyoming's got it cooking right now. And here they come now inside Air Force territory as it's first and 10. They come out in the I formation with two tight ends and Smith drops back. He's looking, rolls to the right. He's gonna run and he'll pick up a gain of seven but there's a flag on the play and it looks like it's going to be holding. And so Wyoming moves backwards. It's going to be first and 20 now as Smith takes the snap. He doesn't have time, and he's sacked. Second and 24. Smith from the pistol. He's going to fire for the screen, and he doesn't have it. Just missed his receiver. It'll be third and 24 now. A huge hole here for Wyoming after that holding penalty. It's third and 24 now as they line up in the shotgun. Smith all alone as he brings Heron in motion to the left side. Smith takes the snap, fires over the middle, and now that hole got bigger. Intercepted. That one is picked off by Pierce, and he'll be stopped at the 35-yard line as Brett Smith underthrew his receiver on a poor throw, and it'll be Air Force ball as they'll take over. It'll be first and 10 now for Air Force after the turnover as they line up in the I formation. Graves hands off to Cobb on a draw, gets stuck behind the lineman, and now he breaks free. Harris trying to catch him. I don't think he will, and he doesn't. Touchdown, Air Force, and they will score the first points of the game. And I can't tell if that was good blocking or just poor containment by Wyoming there as Cobb got stuck behind a lineman and bounced out to the outside and scores the first points of the game. Smith will take the snap and it's a toss to Miller and he gets stuffed behind the backfield. A loss of three on that one as Miller had nowhere to go. On this third and 13 as Smith calls an audible and he'll take the snap as he drops back, moving left and he's sacked. Couldn't even get a great punt out of that one as Air Force will have it inside Wyoming territory here just at the 49-yard line as Graves takes the snap. And he's sacked in the backfield. That's Bernthaler on the sack as he gets his hands around him and drags him down. Split back shotgun formation here for Air Force as Graves takes the snap. He's going to try to run, and he's not going to get out of that one. Guess who again? It's Justin Bernthaler on the sack. Third 19 for Air Force as Graves takes the snap. He's going to fire short of the first down marker for Hunter, and he powers his way forward and picks up the first down. Graves drops back here for third and 10. He's going to escape the pocket, and he runs forward for a first down, getting inside the 25-yard line as Air Force seems to have no problem converting the third and longs. 18 seconds left here for Air Force to try to get a score as Graves will take the snap. And he's going to try to escape again as he's running. And he is stopped. And only after a gain of one as Bernthaler makes the tackle. And Daniel Graves is coming up limping. We'll check up on him and see what his injury is. Snap down. Kick is up. And it is good. Air Force will put up three before the half ends. And it is 10-0 Air Force. And Wyoming is going to have a lot to talk about after that first half stinker as Air Force jumps out to a 10-0 lead in the second game for Wyoming in Mountain West Conference play. Falcons here are excited and looking for an upset here at War Memorial, and we'll see what adjustments Wyoming can make when the second half begins. Wyoming could really use a stop here on defense as Air Force will start out on offense first here in the third quarter as the handoff goes to Cobb straight up the middle, takes a gang of tacklers to get him down. After he picks up a gain of six, it'll be second and four. And we have news that Daniel Graves will not return to this game as he has a strained Achilles. He will be replaced by Kale Pearson, who gets the pitch out here to Getz. And Getz will pick up enough for the first down, picks up just four, and makes the first down marker. Air Force is two for three on third down conversions today as Pearson comes out and split backs in the shotgun formation. And he's going to hand it off to Cobb. And that's Mike Purcell who tells him he will go nowhere. Loss of three. And they will have to punt. Smith takes the snap. Stepping up. And he's going down. Another sack given up by this Wyoming offensive line as Smith takes a wallop. 
Third and long yet again for Wyoming as they come out in the pistol. This time they need 15, and they're not going to get it as Smith was drilled as he threw that one straight into the dirt. Fourth and 15, Wyoming will have to punt yet again. Gets in motion as Pearson drops back. He's going to pass for the first time today. Swings it out to Cobb, who picks up the first down and is pushed out of bounds by Nzacha, but not after picking up a 15-yard gain. First and 10 as Air Force just continues to get it rolling. And they're going on the option this time, but that is stopped in the backfield by Gali Muhammad. Oh, loss of two as Pearson goes nowhere. Second and 12 now here for Air Force as they come out in the shotgun formation. Cobb in the backfield as Pearson brings MacArthur in motion. He's going to pitch it out to MacArthur on the option, and there's nobody containing the edges. And Air Force is making this a blowout. MacArthur walks in as he was more open than a 7-11 there as the defense completely collapsed on Pearson while nobody watched MacArthur on the pitch out. A disastrous game thus far for Wyoming is now they're in the second half where they have not scored in over five quarters. Smith drops back. He's going to fire left side. They're going to try to get something started here as he hits McNeil for a big gain. Knocked out of bounds just at midfield. Bunch pistol formation here for Wyoming as Miller joins Smith in the backfield. Smith will take the snap. He's looking. Got all day to throw. And now he's sacked. And that's the fourth sack that Wyoming has given up today. It has been a tough going for Brett Smith trying to get some protection so he can throw. Smith takes the snap, fires over the middle. He hits Bruce and big Brucey finally getting some action today and he'll rumble for a first down. Smith going play action here. He's going up top to McNeil who was wide open and he missed him. Oh, he wishes he had that one back. You cannot miss a guy like that when he's that open. Smith going play action again, and he is hit as he throws. It'll fall innocently incomplete, and it'll be third and 10 now for Wyoming. And Wyoming just has a look of desperation as they come out in the shotgun quads trio formation. It's Smith, fires left side, and that one is picked off. That's the linebacker, Nicholas, and Smith's the only one who could get him. Fortunately, he shoves him out of bounds, but not before the interception. They'll take over near midfield as Air Force will go into the fourth quarter with a 17-0 lead over Wyoming. A poor, poor performance by Wyoming as Air Force has been dominant on both sides of the field. And if Wyoming can't get anything going in the fourth quarter, you might as well call this Third one seven over. seven now for Air Force as Wyoming, if they can get a stop here, maybe the offense can turn it around as Pearson goes play the action, fires over the right side, and that's not what they needed. A huge third down conversion as he finds Getz, and they pick up the first down near the 30-yard line of Wyoming. Pearson brings a man in motion. It's his receiver as they go on the option. Pearson... Can't go far, though, as Gali Muhammad stops him after a gain of two. Second and eight, they're going to come out in the single back formation as they bring their tight end in motion. Pearson going to pitch it out to get, and that is going nowhere. And that is Bernthaler and Gali Muhammad on the tackle. Third and 11 now for Air Force as they come out in the shotgun with split backs. Wyoming's going to bring the heat. And, oh, they tried to set up the screen, but it didn't matter. I don't know who got him on the sack there. That was, it was Gali Muhammad. But there was a flock of yellow jerseys coming straight after Pearson. He didn't have a chance at all to get that pass off. And Air Force will have to punt. And what can the Wyoming offense do here? Can Brett Smith finally get it together as Smith takes the snap? They're setting up the screen, and he overthrew Miller on the screen pass. I don't know what is up with Smith today. Smith in the shotgun with split backs as he takes the snap. Steps up, fires left side. Wow, and that's another interception, and they will get it at the Wyoming 30-yard line. I have no clue what is up with Brett Smith today. He's been making poor decisions. That's his third interception. And Air Force is probably just looking to run out the clock here as they come out in the split back shotgun formation. Handoff will go to Cobb, and he is stopped in the backfield by the safety, Mark and Zacha. Third and six for Air Force as they come out in the I formation. Pearson was actually going to drop back the pass here, and he'll try to run for the first down, but can't. 
and Brett Smith has not had a good day by any stretch of the imagination. Poor throws all over the field with three interceptions, and when he came to the sideline, he and Coach Mashburn had a heated discussion as Mashburn's trying to get his attention here, trying to get his quarterback focus, and Brett Smith is just not having any of it. And we'll have to see how that affects this uh, Wyoming offense going forward as Brett Smith comes out. Eight for nine passing, 107 yards, no touchdowns, three interceptions. Here they come now. Full house formation here in the pistol. They're going to try to get the running game going as they hand off to Miller to the left side. Only picks up two. They'll line up in the pistol formation with two wide to the left as Lang moves in motion. And Smith will go play action. Going up top. He's got McNeil. And he did not miss him that time. And McNeil will walk in for a touchdown unfortunately it might be too little too late watch it again here on replay smith goes play action throws up top to mcneil puts the ball in the right location and they score as they finally break their dry spell in the second half well i guess it's better late than ever as sullivan will kick this one off to air force's get takes it from his own end zone he'll break one tackle and harris will lay the lumber on him and put him down at the 20-yard line. Well, Wyoming does have three timeouts. Let's see if they can get their desired three and out here as the handoff will go on a stretch play to Cobb, and he'll only pick up two. Wyoming burns their first timeout. Second and eight now for Air Force as they come out in a offset eye, maybe a power look here. Handoff goes to Cobb, and he goes nowhere. Loss of one. Third and nine now. Cobb in motion. They're going to hand it off straight up the middle to DeWitt, and he will be stopped just short of the first down marker. And here's Wyoming's shot to bring this within a possession. First and 10 here as Smith is set up in the pistol formation. He drops back, and he is sacked. That is not what Wyoming needed as the clock will continue to run, and they need to hurry up. They need to run the hurry-up offense. They're taking their time out there. There's no sense of urgency. Hurry to the line. As Smith finally gets his troops together, and he'll hike the ball. He'll fire left side, so the sideline, that's McNeil who he hits and wisely gets out of bounds as McNeil makes his fifth reception of the day. And this is a huge third down for Wyoming because they not only need the first down, they have to get downfield because they're still down by two possessions. As Smith fires left side for McNeil, who picks up the first down and crosses midfield as Brett Smith hits 200 yards for the day. Second and 10 now for Wyoming as they come out in the shotgun. Smith winds up downfield. McNeil is wide open, and he'll get it for the touchdown. Better late than ever, huh? Now they're only down by seven, pending the extra point, which will put them in position to possibly win the game if they can get the onside kick. And a chance to pull off one of the most ridiculous comebacks ever. All comes down to Sullivan's foot. Here's the kick. And he kicks it too far. MacArthur recovers for Air Force. And they are two kneel downs away from the win. And Air Force will leave this game with the W and remain undefeated in Mountain West Conference play. As the final score here is Air Force 20, Wyoming 14. And what was pretty much a stinker of a game for Wyoming. Minus the whole desperation towards the end of the game. This is Jack Sable here. You know where to find me on Mondays because there will be a lot to talk about. So have your questions ready, and I'm signing off.